Soccer on BTN is brought to you by Meyer. Sign up for M Perks. Get personalized rewards. Save 50% more each year at Meyer. You're just minutes from saving at mperks.com. And by State Farm. Here to help life go right, talk to a State Farm agent today. Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship game in Westfield, Indiana. 20 mile per hour wins. No score, though. Your seventh seed, Minnesota, and your regular season champ, Penn State Nittany Lions. Later today on BTN, don't miss the 2018 Big Ten Men's Soccer Tournament as top seed, Indiana. First team to go 8-0 in the regular season. They're in quarterfinal action in Bloomington against Tim Lenahan's Northwestern Wildcats, and it's right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. The Golden Gophers have the wind as they hope to continue to take the stairs and join Penn State in the NCAA tournament. Zeros at the half. It's windy in Westfield, Indiana. Grand Park, your host to the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament Championship game. Number seven seed, Minnesota. Number one seed, Penn State. We're tied at zeros through 45. Logan, everybody, Dean Linky, along with Kate Mark Graff. And Kate, Minnesota dealing with Penn State and the wind. Now they'll have the wind at their back to start the second half. Well, Minnesota was on the back foot for larger portions of the first half, then able to create opportunities. But Penn State wasn't able to capitalize. Well done to Minnesota, creating a game plan that nullified some of their key attacking players. Yeah, but you're right. When we roll to the highlights, it's going to be mostly all Penn State attacking the Minnesota goal. Well, it starts off early in the first 10 minutes. Charlotte Williams' determination and her center of gravity allows her to stay balanced enough to get onto this ball. An excellent ball on the ground, but due to a last-ditch, excellent de defending move by Peterson, denies a goal-scoring opportunity. And no. continued on. This is the center back. Right now, the midfield is not able to find themselves free for the Nittany Lions. So leave it to the center back, Ortega Harada, head up the entire time, trying to create something with so many numbers converging on her. She's not able to get that one on frame. And it continues on again. This is another attack. A nice little interplay. Perhaps the best attack of the game. Should have been taken one time by Williams. Didn't have her feet right. Took the extra touch. Bought enough time for the defense to converge and nullify her angle. Take a look at the stats. Three shots on goal for Penn State. None for Minnesota. Corner kicks about even. Minnesota no shots on goal their last 172 minutes against Penn State. Well, they have difficulty in that final third connecting passes and moving the ball towards Penn State's goal and possibly creating a goal-scoring opportunity. They hope that the wind and the insertion back in the line of April Bakken can change that. Penn State won this tournament in 15 and 17. Minnesota won it in 16. Someone is going to take that trophy home. Is it going to Minnesota or is it going to State College? Right now, all fries at Wendy's are just $1. That's a huge deal on any size of Wendy's natural cut sea salted goodness. But a deal this good won't last long. So get your dollar fries at Wendy's before they're gone. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Get someone a cab. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy. But it's, it's on, on us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Both these teams have great fans, and they will travel bundled up here on a windy day in Westfield. Halftime of the Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship game. No score between Minnesota and your regular season champion, Penn State Nittany Lions. And as we look at our Meyer Season Awards, you win the regular season, you're going to get some recognition. And Erica Dombach. And she gave thanks to Ann Cook and Tim Wassel on her coaching staff. Her fourth Big Ten Coach of the Year, Lori Walker, Hawks goalkeeper Devin Kerr, was the Big Ten Goalkeeper of the Year. Kaylee Rio, one of the best defenders in the nation, let alone the Big Ten. Everything goes through number 10, Emily Ogle for Penn State. She was the Big Ten Midfielder of the Year. And Minnesota has been rocking with Bakken all season long. 13 goals on the season. Megan McClellan for Michael Neal's Rutgers Scarlet Knights, your Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Great job by all of those players, part of our Meyer Season Awards. What a great season it's been. It all comes down to this. Halftime of the Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship. 
No score, Minnesota and Penn State on BTN. Soccer on BTN is brought to you by Discover Card, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. By Bayer, proud sponsor of the Big Ten Conference. Bayer, science for a better life. And by Dr. Pepper and its local Dr. Pepper bottlers, proud sponsors of the Big Ten Conference. Dr. Pepper, official drink of fans. That trophy on the line as we view our Dr. Pepper tournament look. It's been a great tournament. Close games, late goals. Penn State with the winner from Shiva against Michigan. An own goal to get by Illinois. Minnesota on the road. A late goal from Bakken. Two more from Bakken to knock off Nebraska. And here we go at zero. Somebody wants that trophy, Kate. <laughs> and Minnesota hopes they can change the history against this team this season. Last time they faced each other, Penn State was able to come out victorious because of the excellent wide play of Abello, who's not currently playing. She's out injured, but look at this quality. Able to take on 1v1 defending out wide, create that separation through that deception. And here, just with pure pace, a well-timed run to keep herself onside. And she's able to beat Nielsen. She is not here today. And you can see how the way that Minnesota lines up, where they are exposed the most is on the wide areas. Her lack, her her not being available today, you can see other people trying to figure out ways to solve and create some attack from the wide areas. That's a big loss for Penn State. Well, yeah, she's got seven of those 38 goals. That's a lot, including those two that you saw against Minnesota in the regular season. Second half underway, 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament Championship game, Westfield, Indiana, the glorious Grand Park. And Penn State coming out, going against the win on the attack. As Fiedler drops back. Great to be alongside Kate Markreff. Two gold medals, World Cup champion in 1999. I'm Dean Linke. Championship Sunday, field hockey. We'll crown a champion after this, and the men's soccer quarterfinals will get rolling. Just another exciting Sunday on BTN. Golden Gophers, perhaps going to change their game plan with the wind at the back. McKenna Beisman, the freshman wearing number 15, will start the second half late in the first half. Peterson, that huge save coming out of nowhere, sliding in on Williams in the first half, making the first half highlights. Ogle will come back to Rio. Shiva. Yeah, you think about it. Taylor Ferry's got seven goals on the season. Schnurr's got seven goals. She comes on as a sub, and then Obello, seven goals. So they start the first half and the second half, missing actually 14 of those 38 goals. Schnurr did come on. I thought she was nice. Her back to goal as well. They'll need her as well with the wind now going against her to hold up the ball. I thought she was more impactful in the semifinals in that central high spot with Talia Ferry going out wide for dubs. It'll be interesting to see when Talia Ferry does get substituted in, where she goes into, and what slot. You can already tell Penn State knows what they're going to do. They do it anyway. They play an attractive brand of soccer. They're going to keep it on the ground here dealing with the wind as Nolf will earn a throw in. Schnurr stays in to start the second half wearing that number eight jersey. Here's Shiva. Now Ogle. Nice short passes. It's one way to manage the win. Here's Jean. Jean, she's in the 18. Knocked away and Williams can't get over it, but Ogle can. Maddie Elliston off. Shiva back to Williams. Wind or no wind, Penn State picking right up where they left off. There's that battle that Kate Markraft wanted to see. Ogo and Fiedler going at it. And Fiedler having to play a little bit more defensive to try to nullify Ogo. Look at them back to back. Both very strong on the ball, excellent balance. Don't get disrupted with a little physical contact. 
But if you put Ogle under pressure, at least disrupts her a bit and buys your team enough time to get defensively organized. Because once she's turned up and facing you, her technique on the ball, the weight in which she puts on the pass, as well as her decision making is top notch. So even if you don't get on it and you don't win it, at least you bought your team some time to get better prepared defensively. Real. That calm stride and calm ability on the ball. She won it back and then she plays it over to Alina Ortega Hirado. Hirado and Real both made runs down the middle in the first half. Gene also made a run along the left side. Ogle heads it right back to Williams. It's going to roll all the way out of bounds. Again, the last three Big Ten tournament titles have been won by one of these two teams. 15 and 17 by Penn State. 2016 by Minnesota. Beisman, Beisman, one bounce and no problem to Amanda Dennis. Our first real good look at her as she had nothing to do in the first half. Dubs, Ogle quickly. Now Williams. Looking for Schnur, but Peterson sends it to Beisman. That's the first shot on goal versus Penn State since 2016. That's quite some time as we showed you the highlights from Penn State's win during the regular season. Ortega Hirado, top of the 18, Nielsen. Maddie Nielsen has been part of this run here late. In fact, she was so important in that game against Rutgers, came up with big saves. Amir Ali was all over the Minnesota goal late for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and Nielsen. Managing her line, coming out like she did right there, top of the 18, making big saves when her team needed it. Schnur, seven goals and three assists. Started some games, but really been a super sub for Erica Dombach's Penn State Nittany Lions. Ortega Hirado, this time electing to see if she can drop it over the top to Nolf. Of course, Maddie Elliston, Mary Jason Nolf, a two-time NCAA champ, three-time finalist wrestler at Penn State. That's a power couple. In Happy Valley. Warrior, give it to Rio. Castro trying to take care of Jean. Jean gets too far underneath it. It'll come back to Minnesota. And every passing option in advance of Jean is totally shut down with so many numbers of Minnesota either on a player or clogging passing lanes. It's going to be critical for Jean to pick and choose if she's going to cut inside. Then she has to be dedicated and proactive and be in going to take that shot. There can't be any indecision because I think that's what that was. She didn't want to come in and take it with a shot but had nothing on so then she didn't have her feet right. Ortega Hirado. Shiva. Knocked out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Penn State.
Dropped in over the top. Nielsen in trouble. Williams, a swing and a miss. Just a little shaky there. Gene Castro. Boy, Williams is almost like she didn't know exactly where the ball was because Nielsen was way off her line. Unorthodox defending can some, um, sometimes throw off the most calm and composed players because they're not used to facing that. Gene again. Albrecht. So the question is whether Nielsen had made the right decision to come off their line. An excellent ball in dumped in between two defenders. It did get hold up. Nielsen has no business coming off her line there. She had enough defenders around Williams that could put pressure on her. Good ball from Ogle. Sent in to Dubs. Back to Ogle. And the keeper with Schnur lurking. And Minnesota under heavy pressure here. Just like they were in the first half. Wind or no wind, Penn State is bringing it. Wow, that gives you an idea of the power of the wind, though. <laughs> yeah, she usually hits kicks about 10 yards past the center circle. So that, that kick was wind-aided by about 30 yards. Easily. One bounce to the goalkeeper on the other side. And you're right, yeah, Nielsen normally doesn't get a whole lot of distance off of her kicks. There's Williams. She's still thinking about that last opportunity. Probably not. She's not afraid to shoot. Shooter's got to shoot, right? And there's Williams trying to thread the needle there to Shiva. Gene, little touch. Fiedler. Give it up to Castro. Castro going to take a shot. Right to Amanda Dennis. There's Dennis, the junior from San Diego. What a story she is, by the way. Let's take a look at this shot here from Castro. And right now, everything for Minnesota is happening on the transition counterattack. Nobody coming up to put pressure on the ball with four defenders back, retreating, watching to see whether or not Castro is going to lay it off to one of her wide options, decides to take it, and rightly so, has a little bit extra power on it due to the win but nothing really to test Dennis in terms of accuracy and forcing her to move a bit. Fiedler to Bakken. Bakken. And Dennis again. In 2012, Penn State made the College Cup. It was out in San Diego. Amanda Dennis, who has it now, was an eighth grader. She went to the College Cup, showed up, like the Penn State fans, ended up sitting near the Penn State fans. By the end of it, she was doing the We Are chant. Randomly, her mom received an email from Penn State about a four-hour goalkeeper clinic that would take place in January the next year. She lives in San Diego. She tells her mom she wants to go. They get on a plane. They fly all the way to State College. She has the best time of her life, loves the campus, declares as a freshman in high school that she wanted to be a Penn State Nittany Lion. Bakken! And it's Dennis guarding that near post. Bakken wins it back. Bakken back across and Bakken Dennis, Dennis denying Bakken. And nothing really challenging Dennis on this, but it's a good sign for Minnesota to see Bakken getting on the ball, big, big 10 player. That's actually well defended by Real, forcing Bakken wide, not giving her an opportunity to unleash her shot, but Bakken's able to retrieve it. But again, nothing really to test Dennis, who is excellent positioning in goal. In fact, Fiedler was a little bit upset that she wasn't played with a slop ball on the back post, asking for it for Bakken on her second chance. Now compare that to what you saw on the other side with Nielsen. Nielsen's coming out trying to make plays instead of letting the play come to her. And you get to see how much more composed it makes your back line. There's Nielsen. Shot. Advantage now 4-3 Minnesota with the changing and the win behind Minnesota. A couple there from Bakken and you saw Castro also with a shot here just in the last three minutes. Dubs. Check back and give it to Rio. Shiva. Rio coming forward. 
inside there by Kuhn. Moyer. Feel like Penn State so close. Schnur was offside that time. Did not step forward when Peterson told the rest of the line to come forward. The show for the Nittany Lions by number 18. You see Schnur, she's continuing her movement that way. It bounces inadvertently off William Shin. That's that compact defending from Minnesota. The minute the ball goes forward, they take two steps forward, and it takes a very disciplined concentration for whoever's that highest target forward to remember that even when they're not involved in the play to follow that line. Dubs had it for a moment. Loss, Fiedler. Remember, Erica Dombach's number one keys. In fact, she said it twice and then texted it twice. Lock in, Bakken, lock in, Bakken. And then just decided to come in with another one. And really, for the most part, I mean, April Bakken actually left with 15 minutes to go hello, in that first hello, half. Hello. You have not seen a ton of April Bakken until those last two opportunities. And I think that's where we're going to see her is on that transition play. That's where Minnesota is developing any of their attack moving forward as Penn State's midfield is starting to control the ball and spread out a little bit. You see Ogle demanding that ball in the wide inside channels instead of the center backs being the ones that were there in the first half. But what's interesting is that Minnesota has been able to take advantage of the wind. Nielsen. Except for that. Right, except, yeah, except for the goal kicks. One bounce. Feeler. But that's now smart because the first one she hit went straight to Dennis, and this time we get to see the entire Minnesota offense trying to push that line, knowing that the ball is going to land at the 30. Fiedler will give it back to Albrecht. Bakken is hoping to turn off the shoulder of OJ, but once again, the wind will rush it out of bounds. 13 goals on the season for Bakken. As a freshman, two goals, five assists. Sophomore, seven goals, three assists. Last year, four goals, 12 assists as he was dropping the dimes. This year, though, it's been Fiedler finding Bakken, 13 goals and five assists. And actually, it's worth noting that her 25 assists are just one behind Fiedler in their career, so both those players very unselfish. Fiedler's assisted on five of Bakken's 13 goals. April Bakken was a competitive figure skater as a kid. Super athletic, told me yesterday on the phone that her mom considered her a Tanya Harding-like skater. <laughs> okay, just, keep going, yeah, keep going with the story. Just in the sense of the athletic <laughs> jumps and that part of it, because she said she wasn't a frilly girl, but as far as the jumps and the competitive nature of ice skating, her athletic ability was in full display. She was pretty good from what I understand but then decided to focus on soccer full time as she got into her teen years. Well, what's interesting to watch is the players that have multi-sport backgrounds, they're more balanced on the ball. Charlotte Williams, an expert skier, she doesn't get knocked off the ball very often and very comfortable running with the ball in tight spaces. Same thing with Bakken, just able to be balanced in different ways. Yeah, she talked about how it made her a better soccer player just because of those reasons right there, Kate. Schnur, Shiva pointing into space. Schnur, though, with her head down. Back over to Ogle. Again, Shiva asking for it. It'll come right to Nielsen. And that's more of what you're talking about, what you want from Nielsen. Just stay calm and composed. You have enough defenders in front of you to do their job. Allow them to do their job. Your job is to mine that goal line. And only when they break down and they cannot recover do you come out. Turnover. Peterson. Now Bakken. Fiedler can't trap it. Another one of those seniors that we've not said a ton about is Emily Hesland, senior from Woodbury, Minnesota. She was part of that Minnesota Thunder Club team for three years. Those five seniors. There's Dennis. 
How about San Diego, you show up as an eighth grader. I mean, that's just incredible. It's a long ways away, as you know, San Diego all the way to State College. Just randomly both showing up and kind of drawn over there. And then that clinic and as a freshman in high school, she knew she wanted to leave sunny California and head all the way across the country. Here's Bakken. She's going to try to test Dennis. And she does. As it goes over the crossbar, Bakken is dialed in. And Bakken is finding opportunities by laying off her defender, sitting in that the gap, and so she's able to receive it. Bakken. There, again, no one's stepping to, Ortega Harado did have her with a back to pressure, but then she steps off. Bakken realizes that and then decides to have a go. Yeah, that first goal she scored against Nebraska, as you said, world class. <laughs> it was insane. Another good example of the wind just holding that ball up at Minnesota. Pocket pick, though, by Jean. Jean does not have to worry about the wind. She keeps it on the carpet. Trying to go through players. Gene stays with it, crosses it. And Nielsen, using that height, long arms, good hands, doesn't parry it over. She keeps it. Nice soft hands from Nielsen there. Good run from Gene. One bounce. So she just needs to take a little bit off the... That or take a couple seconds. Allow her team enough time to advance. Right now, it's okay that you have one player challenging for it, but the problem is you don't have anyone underneath. So if the defense does win it, that second ball is ripe for the taking. You see Fielder is the one that's the more advanced, the midfielder. She can't even catch up to the play. Nielsen needs to hold on to her punt for about another four seconds, get her team time to go up, and then go. That's a great weapon, but only if you know how to use it. Williams. Williams thought Gene was going to be making a run, played it into space, and nobody was there. We can see Gene here taking on players, gets aided by a deflection that speed. She's looking to cut this across the top, and Nielsen just calmly holding it because Schnur was sitting on that back post. Nielsen, way out. She did take a little off there. Second ball, though, won by Penn State. Back into the game for Penn State, Frankie Talaferi. Seven goals and five assists. First team all Big Ten. there by Emily Heslin. Winding stab looking for Castro. TJ McKendrick wearing that number five jersey sits in there with Heslin and we've not said Heslin or McKendrick's name too much which gives you a little idea of how Minnesota is approaching this game with those two holding mids sitting right in front of those back four. Albrecht, feeling better, makes a good run. Could open up some space, though. Talia Ferry had it for a moment.
Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry running downhill toward the middle. Over to Ogle. Talia Ferry rested off the bench. Erica Dombach, Warrior, directing traffic. Gives it to Rio. Dubs. No carry a bellow. Dubs dribbles right into that Golden Gopher back line. Now it's just about letting the ball do the work instead of too many touches. Everyone from the Nittany Lions is trying to be that one that comes up with that killer pass or sets it up. Instead of letting the ball do the work, fewer touches, better ball movement, and better off the ball movement. That is what has made them so successful. Maddie Nolf. Talia Ferry. Penn State averaging almost two goals per game on the season. The highest mark in the Big Ten at 195 as Nielsen picks it up. They're also leading the conference in shots per game at 15.3 and shots on goal per game at just under eight. That translates to Penn State's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> they just have a complete solid team. So if one player gets shut down, another one is skill enough to try to create something. Schnur. Schnur can't get over it. See that graphic? Pretty good. Our BTN crew, pretty good as well. Billy Proctor, Alex Struckman taking the steers with those great graphics in the first half. Breaking Breaking down. Minnesota Golden Gophers as Schnur looks like she's going to come out. Replacing number nine, Maddie Kessler. And for the Nittany Lions, number 27, Marissa Shiva. Shiva back in. Kristen Schnur. Erica Dombach, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Fourth time in 12 years. Tim Wasso, the goalkeeper coach. Has been there for his share not all 12 years and cook's been there for all 12 years and cook erica dombach both pretty good players conference first teamers at william and mary and and cook went on to win a wsa title first year of the pro league with the san jose barrier cyber race next year she was with washington and they made it to the final game she's a winner she's a solid midfielder an eight Able to connect others, but able and do the final pass. But more than anything, she just is a glue type player, personality wise, really easy and chill, doesn't get too high or too low. And that allows people that are maybe going all over the place that calm backbone to rely upon in those tense moments. Gene plays it back to Dennis, and Wynn just freezes it out of bounds to Minnesota. Winding stand, waiting as subs coming in. Junior from Omaha. Back into the game for Minnesota. Is Selena Numador from Wisconsin. Seven, for Minnesota, number 17, Selena Numador. Run there from Beisman. A couple McKenna of subs. Beisman. Numador in for Beisman. Jean. Jean. She has been electric here in the second half. Jean, going to try to do it herself from distance, and she's not being afraid to shoot this entire game, but especially here in the second half. One of these times, you wonder if she's gonna be rewarded for her efforts. Very dangerous on the dribble with her speed. It's just a matter of the end product. Well, that's a cross. That was a shot that got away from her. And you get to see Shiva running the distance on the far side. Again, I think Minnesota's happy for Jean to have the ball out wide because she might break that initial pressure and that second pressure, but they're well positioned defensively because of the extra time that they have as she builds the ball forward to get in better spots defensively. Trying to play it long to Bakken, but it's just impossible to figure out a way to hit that ball without not letting the wind add 10 yards onto every ball played forward. Ward. 
She'll come in fresh after extended time on the bench. Patricia Ward, two goals and two assists. Scored her first goal in her first match for Minnesota. 11 seconds remaining against Utah. And she got the win. There's Ward. Knocking it off of Dubs. In the tournament, each team that has scored first has advanced. Wanted to wait till 15 minutes before I read the note from Steve Shucker here. As entering today, Big Ten title games have gone to overtime. Fiedler over to Heslin. Nikki Albrecht down. Dennis with the save. Albrecht trying to get to it. Alina Ortega Hirado. The show for Minnesota by number 13, Nikki Albrecht. Save number double zero, Amanda Dennis. And now from the other side, defensively outside backs getting forward. Albrecht, the pl player recovering from the flu, is able to commit her defender and then unleash the shot. Very deceptive on when she was going to hit that. Got Dennis to ground, but those are some strong wrists. Able to parry it away. Wide of danger. Five saves today, all coming here in the second half. Bakken. Able to stop it at the end line. Good extra effort there from Bakken. Lofted ball. Top of the 18. Ward. One by Penn State. Here's Shar Williams with number 10, Emily Heslin. Jean, first time. Calling for the shield there was Nielsen. Good communication. And I love what Coach Golan has done for Minnesota. She puts Ward over on Ellie Jean's side to go toe-to-toe -to -toe as they're similar match in speed, which frees up Bakken to stay higher and play a more advanced attacking role. On that right side, if you're the winger from Minnesota, you're going to play defense more than offense, trying to chase down Ellie Jean, who likes to go forward, the outside back for the Nittany Lions. That is a part of the reason why Bakken's able to now make more of an impact in the final third, because she's playing on this left-hand side. Great moves, great coaches. Two of the top young coaches in the game. Stephanie Golan from Minnesota, Erica Dombach for Penn State. Coach Golan, seventh season. Talk about that consistency with the coaching staff. Stephanie Golan saw her coaching staff depart. Crystal Coleman, Seidel, now a head coach. Becky Fletcher, Molly Riles, and Allie Lipscher, the coaching staff for Minnesota. More subs coming on now for Penn State. Dubs, it's a hand from both Coach Dombach and Coach Cook. The rest of the bench for Penn State. The smallest team Erica Dombach has ever had as far as numbers, but perhaps one of the closest. Okay, Chi wanted nothing to do with my question about the magic to win another college cup like she did just three years ago in 2015. She was focused only on this weekend, and I believed her. Well, it's smart because she knows that so much can happen in conference play. And then after that, you can't control your seedings. You can't control your opponents. Matchups, you might be a fifth-ranked seed, but maybe you are better paired against an eighth-ranked seed or what have you or someone that's higher. So she focuses on what they can control, which is having the right attitude, bringing more of a work ethic to this team. And I think with the smaller numbers, they've had to figure out different ways to win because when a player isn't working in the past, they're able to pull them out, give them some rest, and able to adjust it a little bit. Now they have to make do with what they have with the smaller roster size. So they decide to add a bit more work ethic to their play after watching a lot of other Big Ten teams take it to them on the intensity side. Yeah, they adapted that blue collar Big Ten mentality and they won nine in a row behind that three pillar foundation. Emily Ogle. Talked a lot about the three pillars yesterday during our calls. Here's Gene with the throw in. Ogle had originally committed to Alabama, but then decommitted to go to Penn State. One of the reasons wanted to be closer to home, and she said she changed the kind of person she was, the kind of athlete she was, and wanted to represent the red, white, and blue as well. And 
Of course, we talked about Erica Dombach, part of the USA coaching staff. In fact, she was on the bench, I believe, coaching defenders when you won <laughs> one of your gold medals, right? She was our defensive coach, very sound tactically. Like so many of the Big Ten coaches, so good at making adjustments. Like we've seen Coach Golan come out a bit differently in the second half. But Coach Dombach was one of the better coaches I had for sure. Kate Markcraft with two gold medals and that World Cup title. Here's Bakken and Fiedler. Bakken into space. Plays it up. Lumador had it for a second and lost it. comes back to take the throw in. OJ. Too long, too strong there for Tell Ferry. Be a throw in for Albrecht. Championship Sunday on BTN. Field hockey will crown a champion after this one. Men's soccer quarterfinals get underway with Indiana hosting the Northwestern Wildcats who knocked off Ohio State yesterday 3-1. to one. Ogle in. Schnur is in. Schnur may have even clipped that far post. I'm not sure, but Schnur timed to run perfectly. Ogle playing it into space and it was almost 1-0 Penn State. And Ogle with her head up commits the defender. No, she's going to Schnur the entire time, but bought time to allow Schnur to make that run across who got on the inside shoulder, just hooks it too much, trying to beat Nielsen. And that, to me, is the best opportunity they've had all game long. Have not been as threatening as we're used to saying Penn State, but that's give credit to Minnesota. It's bringing a ton of numbers back. There haven't been, that, been those seams that open, but due to excellent decision-making in interplay, Penn State was able to create one. Bakken. Big Ten forward of the year. It was the Big Ten midfielder of the year that made that great pass, Ogle. Numador, and it's parried over the crossbar by Dennis. Dennis asking her team to close down on Numador. Amanda Dennis, she did it on Friday and another big save here on Championship Sunday. And Numador is expecting someone to come out. Shiva gets beat. Ogle's not putting pressure on her either. You have her Gerardo Ortega, Ortega Gerardo right behind her. People are just watching. Dennis has every right to be upset with her team for that. Amanda Dennis had to take a couple steps back and then jump up in the air and parry it over the crossbar. It'll be a corner kick for Bakken. Penn State has not allowed a second half goal since October 25th. August 25th, stand corrected, that's a long time. Deflected out of there. August 25th against then number two, UCLA at home. They do not allow goals in the second half. To be taken by number 20, April Bakken. April Bakken again to take the corner. No score here. As Penn State outscoring opponents 24 to one. In the second stands of Bakken again. Ball driven in, Dennis. Not able to punch it. Peterson has come forward. You know Peterson's story. She came back in less than six months for her final year. Wants to keep on playing soccer. Minnesota, Illinois on that bubble. Stephanie Golan. Started out great and then stumbled just a little bit and got Peterson back and got themselves into the Big Ten tournament. Their biggest wins of the year coming 
without question against the number two seed Rutgers Scarlet Knights, then knocking off the Cornhuskers, trying to make it three in a row in the tournament. Schnur, Talia Ferry, near post. Jean sends it in. That's Williams. Ward will knock it off of Maddie Elliston off throw in Minnesota. Five minutes and 30 some seconds remaining here in regulation. Still no score as Penn State doesn't make it easy. They've actually not allowed a second half goal to a Big Ten opponent since the 2017 regular season finale. That's how long it's been against Big Ten teams. And part of the reason why they won nine in a row coming into this one. Doesn't hurt to have Amanda Dennis in form either. State Farm State of Success. The two best teams in the Big Ten, Big Ten Tournament based on winning percentage. Penn State, an amazing 730. Minnesota, not too bad. As Minnesota trying to win their third Big Ten title. It's Penn State and then the rest of the Big Ten. But it's been tighter than ever, even though Penn State is the regular season champions. It hasn't been as easy for them this year as it has been in years past. And the number seven seed has now kept Penn State off the board. Penn State needed an own goal to advance into the finals. It's just about creating quality opportunities and enough of them so you can play the percentages and have a better chance of one of those going in the more that you create. Moyer. Kuhn. Bakken. Winding stand. Turns it over. We are starting to see Heslin and TJ McKendrick creep up a little bit more in support of the offensive attack for Minnesota. Albrecht. Problem for Dennis as Fiedler goes down. Molly Fiedler, her brother Matt, was Big Ten superstar baseball player for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Played three years in the St. Louis Cardinals pro system. Williams. There's Heslin coming over in time. Gene stepping up. Spocken looks a little bit fatigued. Throw in for the right back. No. Talia Ferry. Moore. Freshman. Big minutes here. Late for Stephanie Golan. Numidor, perhaps the best opportunity. Dennis parried it over the crossbar. Two minutes to change in regulation. Winding stand, waiting for more white jerseys to join in. Bakken. It's one in the midfield. Good little touch. And now Ward. Ward going to go in line. Hoping when she gets there, there's white jerseys to knock it to. She can't do much with it, though. It'll go out of bounds and come back to Penn State. And now all you see is fatigue soccer. Just those half chances. The passes are a little, have a little bit more, they're more errant than they were in the beginning. The extra touches showing mental fatigue, just not making the quick decisions and being sharp. Forward, Fiedler, great job. Trap it, back to Albrecht. Shiva, 
One minute Dolph remaining. Runs right into Matty Dolph. One minute. Williams not happy with herself. Is trying to switch the point of attack and knocked it out of bounds. Four Big Ten title games have gone to overtime. Penn State's been involved of two of them, winning in 2003 overtimes against Michigan in 2001, overtime again against Illinois. Minnesota has not been involved in an overtime session in the Big Ten title game. Heslin. Albrecht. Loose. Nine, Gene eight, denied. Seven, six, Minnesota five, almost four, able to get a shot three, on goal. Two, 90 minutes one. of play. Not enough to crown a 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament champion. And just what you would expect in a championship game. Very tight and tense. Not a ton of clear-cut opportunities. And this thing goes into overtime. Your number seven seed with a great senior class, Minnesota Golden Gophers. The Penn State Nittany Lions, your regular season champion, trying for their seventh time to win the double. Overtime soccer around the corner on Championship Sunday of the Big Ten Network, Minnesota and Penn State at zeros. Right now, I'm being controlled by a guy named Todd. Wrong button, babe. He's got a... You see, Todd here won this exclusive Platinum Xbox One X from Taco Bell. He's a little distracted right now. Throw it. Oh, boy. Todd! Put down the Chalupa! Todd! Grab the $5 double Chalupa box for a chance to win the Platinum Xbox One X only at Taco Bell. Todd! 90 minutes, not enough to crown a Big Ten champion here. The championship game of the Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament, Grand Park, Westfield, Indiana, your outstanding host. Let's take a peek at our Dr. Pepper tournament look. Penn State knocked it off Michigan and Illinois. 1-0 scores to get to the championship game. Minnesota with a thriller in Piscataway. And then took care of business. April Bakken leading the way. Take a look at our second half highlights. Amanda Dennis has had to come up big for Penn State. And all these opportunities came off quick transitions. And Minnesota able to get numbers for this one. Albrecht, the left back, able to unleash a shot, forcing Dennis to the ground to make a save, just unable to get on the recovery. Christian and, Schnur had a good opportunity, too, though, for Penn State. And right back on the other side, this came from a bit of a giveaway, and Schnur it was able to hold her run and just hooks it. The best opportunity for Penn State they've had all game long. Dennis again would come up big though, Kate. And this is as the game is starting to wind down. Numenor comes in and she makes a difference to Milik. She's able to hold on the ball. Nobody from Penn State with three defenders around her are stepping to put pressure on her. Numenor was able just to tee up her shot. All right, Minnesota gonna huddle as the overtime rules. They'll play two 10 minute overtimes. It's sudden victory. You score, you win, you celebrate, you take the trophy, and you dance around. If after two 10 minutes of play, it'll be penalty kicks, which have featured not once but twice already in the Big Ten tournament. Well, it's always exciting when it gets to this time of year, and it does come down to those key moments. And if you're a player and you're completely fatigued, you have to remember what your three main responsibilities are in your role and stick to that and hope that that can help make the difference and put it away before it goes to penalty kicks. See Penn State perfect in overtime. Minnesota 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. So plenty of experience for both teams. This will be the sixth time the Golden Gophers have gone to extra soccer. Good huddle, good energy coming out of the Golden Gopher huddle. Same for Penn State. 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. Five of six tournament games have been decided by either penalty kicks or one goal. As you think about the quality of play in the Big Ten, I mean, it makes you think about the fact that Northwestern wasn't even in the Big Ten tournament. They have 12 wins, including several against top 50 RPI teams. Janet Rayfield's team, you got to believe they're like just itching to get in. Minnesota could affect what they do. Nebraska on the bubble. 
got to feel good about the top four seeds, including Amanda Dennis, Penn State team, as you would think Rutgers, Wisconsin, Ohio State will be in the NCAA tournament. Well, that's what you would expect, but it's with such a tight conference battle in terms of the standings, it's almost like each team is taking a little bit out of each other because anyone can give on any single day. And the tournament committee knows that and recognizes it. It's just a matter of how many slots they decide to give to the Big Ten. That is so well put and certainly demonstrated by the fact that it's taken PKs or just that one goal margin. Not for April Bakken late against Nebraska. That's the only difference. A 2 nothing win for Minnesota on Friday. Real. So Penn State will start the way they started in the second half with the wind against them. They'll keep it on the ground. Quick turn. Albrick there. One back, though, by Penn State. Williams creates her own space. Does not shoot it on frame. That's better by Williams because she's taking it quickly. Too many times in the conference semifinals in this game. Way too many touches. But this time she realizes that she has an opening. She gets it quickly, turns, does a preparation touch right there, and just hooks it, gets on the inside of the ball, I mean the outside of the ball, and hooks it wide of the goal. But those second balls bouncing in front of the back line of Minnesota, it's key to have those players that can anticipate where it's going to fall to get onto it. And Charlotte Williams can do that. Remember, no carry of Bello. Seven goals on the season, not up a goal this weekend. Touch into space. And again, that shooting finishing ability right now. Not there. Moyer shot way off. So it's that channel again in between the midfield and the back line. Penn State able to beat the midfield pressure. And if you're Minnesota and you know that shooting from a distance is not a strength, you're going to keep your numbers back. You're actually not going to send your defenders to go and shut down the shot. You're going to entice them to shoot that and make sure you keep a handle on the front runners that are sitting on your back line and tightening up any seams that may be open. No goals allowed in the Big Ten tournament by either one of these teams. Maddie Nielsen and Amanda Dennis pitching shutouts. They may need to, it could be the story, right, if it goes to penalty kicks. Nielsen, the sophomore. Mentality is to try to do anything she can for this senior class. So supportive of her in goal. Tega Hirado. Talia Ferry is looking for Williams. Peterson punches it forward. He's able to find Numador. Albrecht. First times it. Flag is down. Bakken. What a touch right there. The difference is, of course, Dennis did not come off her line, but what a special touch. By number 20, April Bakken. Save number double zero, Amanda Dennis. Other side, Frankie Talia Ferry. Staying with it. It's still loose. Finally, Albrecht before Shiva can get there. And Dan at the moment. State taking their time with the throw in. Forget Big Ten Field Hockey Championship coming up after this one. And quarterfinals of Big Ten men's soccer, Iowa and Maryland. 
for all the marbles in Evanston, campus of will be played in field hockey. And men's soccer later today, Indiana hosting Northwestern in the Big Ten men's soccer quarterfinals. From Talia Ferry to Moyer. It's Heslin coming all the way back to get a touch on it. Albrecht, kind of a dangerous ball, won by Ogle. Ogle plays it to Jean. Numador trying to handle Jean. Jean staying with it. Numador has been effective off the bench for Stephanie Golan. That's the first time we've seen anyone shut down one of Ellie Jean's run. And that time it was just pure body, getting herself in between the ball and Jean. Peterson. Heads it now, Jean again. Moyer taken down. Referee says it was clean. Numador has been ready. Wards on the left. Bakken steps right into Rio. Big Ten Defender of the Year against the Big Ten Forward of the Year. Bakken again. Little move. Rio stays with her. Bakken will cut it back. And in doubt, Bakken will try to find Fiedler. And Real, just a special defender. Take it away from Fiedler. And Bakken gets shut down, has to turn back, finds Fiedler, who then goes against Real and tries to see if she can have a turn to beat her. Real, excellent defending. And that's a professional foul right there by Fiedler, bringing her down, allowing enough time for a team to get back and get organized. Ortega Herrada, who pushed forward quite a bit on Friday in that matchup against Janet Rayfield's Illini. Overtime soccer to find a Big Ten tournament champion here at Westfield, Indiana, Grand Park. Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the first overtime. You score in overtime, you win, and you're a champion. If not, we'll go to PKs to find a champion of this 2018 edition. Moyer. Neither one of these teams have conceded a goal in the Big Ten Tournament. Heslin. Ogle. The battle there with Fiedler. And Fiedler wins this one. Fiedler taking it from the Big Ten Midfielder of the Year. Playing it forward to Bakken. Bakken's got Numador. Bakken may take it herself, and then Rio, the Big Ten Defender of the Good Year, defending. gets involved. Perfect defending, recovery defending, getting the ball at the right time. Bakken originally had her beat, but she was so far out and had so much distance to cover before she got anywhere threatening. She had to hold on to it, which allowed enough time for Rio to come back. And now Minnesota's getting it a little spell of possession on the ball. Yeah, Numador has been a key part of that as well. Heslin over to Bakken. One minute remaining until the end of the first overtime period. Ward. One minute. Less than a minute remaining here in the first overtime. Penn State will have the win behind their backs in the second and final overtime. Talia Ferry. I was hoping Williams was cutting back, but instead she went more central. One back, though, anyway, by Schnur. Schnur's side of her foot. Ogle. Moyer. 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 
Moyer again. Loose in front. Oh, my, is sitting Nine, just outside eight, the spot six, for Schnur. Six, and five, Schnur, who four, had that great opportunity three, two, earlier, one. not able to put it on frame. And one overtime, not enough. Ooh, that was another opportunity where she could have won the game. And that's all due to Moyer's excellent buzzing and getting the ball in and around the field. Moya's working so hard. Her movement, she was starting on the left-hand side, cut over to the right, finds Ogle into the slot. I don't think that was her intended recipient. I think it was Talia Ferry. Schnur able to get something on it and be the first one there. Schnur's done a wonderful job getting on the inside shoulder of every single defender when making those slashing runs. Now it just needs that final piece and at least get it on goal to Tess Nielsen. First multi-overtime game since 2000 for the Big Ten title. That was the one that Penn State won when they used to go multiple overtimes, three overtimes, to knock off Michigan. And both these goalkeepers riding some phenomenal shutout streaks. Well, just numbers behind for Minnesota. They're keeping so many numbers back. And if Nielsen stays on their line, they're very difficult to beat. And right now, Dennis coming up with some huge saves on those transition opportunities from Minnesota. Our Dr. Pepper tournament look gets us to this point. You gotta be in the top eight to even make the Big Ten tournament. The first round, two of the games going to penalty kicks. As you saw, the Illini beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin and Nebraska knock off the Buckeyes in Columbus. one nothing scores on both ends of the bracket. Penn State using an own goal to get here. And it's been April Bakken with all the goals for Minnesota. <laughs> She's been dominant, especially in that semifinals in her opportunity. She looks a bit tired to me, purposely taking herself out of play. At first, you think she's just trying to keep the width, which she may be doing, but can the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year find herself in positions to receive the ball more often? Right now, Minnesota hasn't been able to put together a ton of passes, but can she somehow figure out a way to be on the end when they clear pressure? You see the shot differential, but remember now, Minnesota got all their shots with the wind behind their back. Penn State has been dealing against the win for the second half and that first overtime. They will have the win behind their backs to try to find the winner. And Penn State has been the cleaner of the two teams in building possession. They just don't have that threatening player up top, except for Schnur, who's had two opportunities to put the game away. It looks, they look tired. The game is getting sloppy. So now they just have 10 more minutes to concentrate and connect passes for both sides to try to move their team up the field and create a dangerous opportunity. First overtime match between Minnesota and Penn State since back in 2007 in Minnesota when the Golden Gophers won one to nothing in two overtimes. That's where we are now, the second overtime. To find a champion of the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. Winding stand, pop it forward. Numador has played a key role off the bench for Stephanie Golan here in this championship matchup. Peterson's going to let it roll out of bounds. As a former center back, let's start with Minnesota. If you're Peterson back there with Kuhn, you're also dealing with the win. What is your approach in front of Nielsen as you try to get through these nine minutes and maybe have a chance at at PKs, what, how are you managing the game as a center back here with the overtime pressure, Kate? Well, it becomes all about verbal communication because that's the one thing that can go is your mental co concentration. So if you've talked to other people, if you're telling them where to go, then you're going to stay in the game. And you have a better chance of keeping them in the game so they don't make those mental mistakes that might create an opportunity for the other team. There's no such thing as too much talk in tight moments. Ogo. Rio. Jean. Moyer. 
picked up there by Heslin. And Penn State hoping to hold the ball a little bit more. They're moving it quicker, one and two touch, and they've put Ortega Harado in the midfield, bringing in Suero in. The Ortega Harado, Herrero, excuse me, is so comfortable with the ball at her feet and building pressure. She's gonna sit in those pockets and add another player in that midfield to help build the ball and move it closer to net. Suero to Shiva. So we'll look to find OJ right on cue from Kate Markraft. She's got it. Maddie Knopf will make an overlapping run, but Shiva will go back in. Nielsen gets over, goes down, and perhaps thinking about chopping a little bit of time. How about that deep breath right there? What a shot from our BTN crew. Been outstanding all weekend long. And there you see the wind and the impact it makes. In the second half, when they had the wind at their back, that ball was bouncing 70 yards away from our own goal. Now it's only bouncing 40. Swirl. Elliot Ferry fights for it. And it could be that kind of second effort play as it looked like Minnesota would not look like. They definitely were hoping that ball was going to run over the end line. And the extra effort from Penn State earns this throw in. We'll see what happens. Moyer there to receive it with Molly Fiedler on her just outside the 18. Thought about turning into Fiedler. A little nutmeg. And after the nutmeg, a foul. Get Moyer, nutmeg, and Fiedler. Fiedler doesn't want anything to do with that. And then Moyer gets called for the foul. Just a little bit too much of the arms going back and forth. Look at this. Back to pressure, able to spin. This is when you work on shielding and then how you're going to beat somebody. It's the fact that she put her arm in that the referee looks like from the angle that the AR was at, as well as the center ref saw, they put that one. But they both were handsy. Jean. It's going to roll out of bounds. And we now have five minutes, or thereabouts, five minutes remaining here in overtime. Will it be penalty kicks to determine the champion of the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament? Jean. Ortega Hirado has pushed forward. Subs for Stephanie Golan have played key roles here. Beisman now Bakken. Winding stat. Minnesota coaching staff led by Stephanie Golan. Everybody up. Everybody standing up. Nobody sitting anymore. Shiva there to take it away from Albrecht. Alina Ortega Hirado, Erica Dombach talking about her versatility. Can play anywhere on the field, exception of goalkeeper, and has pretty much done that in her career. Elizabeth Ball graduating, so they slid Ortega Hirado back to that center back position. Look at Bakken able to knock off Ogle. And now you're starting to see, as you talked about just a little bit ago, Kate, that Friday-Sunday fatigue, so much on the line here. These teams are absolutely spent, and they're going to try to suck it up for three minutes and change here. You get to see the head down, the extra arm waving just to get and cover five yards 
It's just going to take one moment where one player is able to put themselves in a dangerous position and possibly be aided by an error. But it's not going to happen unless you get higher up in the opponent's own box. There is Stephanie Golan. You start to think about those bubbles. Penalty kicks would go down as a tie against a really good RPI team. And win or lose with that tie, you got to start to think that committee members looking at this team, great senior class, everybody healthy now. That's got to help their cause. And you think about Illinois, they lost on an own goal against this high RPI talented Penn State team. So perhaps six is not out of the question for the Big Ten. Well, Minnesota was on the wrong side of the bubble when conference tournament started. Getting to this point has put them a little bit closer to the side they want to be on, and they need a statement today. And you just wonder if this does go to penalty kicks, if a tie is a big enough statement to get themselves in. I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to say that Rutgers statement was pretty good too because Rutgers has a decent RPI. And I have zero impact. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make this clear. Just in case you were thinking. <laughs> Zippo. <laughs> <laughs> Shiva. Real. Penn State not thinking Ty. Gene. Gene's going to cross it. Nielsen comes out nice and calm and <laughs> able to handle it. And a nice little, little give and go right there. Just excellent movement. Perfect touch and just a poor execution of getting that cross. But Nielsen holds on to it, realizes she has time to catch the ball and compose her team. One minute remaining until the end of the second overtime period. One minute. Bakken. Bakken's been the hero for Minnesota and right to Dennis. Boy, how fitting would that have been? And every time she gets the, the ball, it's a collective breath. Everyone Save holds it to see what's going to happen. There just doesn't do enough to challenge Dennis. Right now, Stephanie Golan saying, whatever you do, don't turn it over. Don't turn it over. And it's a turnover. It is Williams. Williams to win it. Oh, and she just fell over the ball. All she needed to do was try to keep it on the ground, go far post. Instead, it sails over the crossbar. And this all comes from an errant pass from Albrecht and quick interplay. Excellent job by Penn State. Recognizing this is a counterattack opportunity, gets underneath it in that moment as she loses her balance. Final seconds being counted down by the public address announcer here at Grand Park. Two overtimes, not enough to find a championship winner of the 2018 Big Ten Tournament. So we'll go to penalty kicks. A thriller on BTN to find a winner. The trophy is waiting. Who's going to take it? Minnesota or Penn State? The drama of penalty kicks around the corner on BTN.
It'll take penalty kicks to find a winner of the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. Both teams huddled up. Dean Linky along with Kate Markraft. Once again, the Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament being held at Grand Park in Westfield, Indiana. As you see our Dr. Pepper tournament look, penalty kicks to find a winner, Kate. Yeah, when you see a 1v7, you think one's going to walk away with it. And although Penn State had the majority of possession, they weren't able to capitalize on their chances. And now Minnesota takes the number one team in the conference into penalty kicks. I got to know, I asked you that other question about how to manage overtime. <laughs> What do you do with your goalkeepers? You know, as a former center back at the highest level, do you even look at the goalkeeper? Your goalkeeper, the one that you played in front of the entire game. You just have to know your goalkeeper. Some goalkeepers want you to get in their face and pump them up, and some don't even want you to look at them. They want to be in their own world. So it just takes that understanding between players that develop and that rapport that builds after time spent together to know what each one needs. First PK shootout in the championship game. And it's happening right here in Westfield, Indiana. Penn State going for the double. It'll be the seventh time if they can win on penalty kicks that Penn State has won the regular season and the Big Ten tournament in the same year. Minnesota, they've won this tournament twice, including just two years ago in 2016 when Stephanie Golan was your Big Ten Coach of the Year. Maddie Nielsen trying to act calm. You got to believe there's some nerves fluttering around for the sophomore. There are nerves, but in the end, the onus is on the kicker. As a goalkeeper, your only job is to do what you're going to do and play solid. And don't make a mistake. Let them beat you. Don't beat yourself. I'm a firm believer in not guessing and just trying to go for it. The minute you think you know where they're going, go that way. Don't just pick one side. Force them to beat you. That's a great point. You think about the pressure on the goalkeepers. It is not easy walking that 30 yards forward, taking that ball, putting it down on the spot. There's a lot of marbles churning around there too, right, for the Absolutely. players taking the, the kicks. And you're gonna watch the gamesmanship from the goalkeepers. This is a total mental game where you're trying to mess with the player by taking time, avoiding going to the line until you absolutely have to, trying to make eye contact to disrupt the kicker's focus. And you're seeing it right now, just a slow walk back by Dennis. April Bakken will go first. She did not look at Dennis at all. Zero eye contact. Waiting for the whistle is Bakken. Dennis set. Bakken perfectly struck inside the post. And the first one is good for Minnesota. And the sigh of relief when you make that first kick, not only as a kicker, but just as a veteran to put this team on. Dennis covered some significant ground on her dive, but just too much power and action in side netting. That was unsavable. A little wry smile there from Bakken. And now Emily Ogle, redshirt senior. Both teams starting with their veterans. The Big Ten forward of the year putting it by. Now the Big Ten midfielder of the year. Whistle. Ogle, deep breath. Goes forward, and Nielsen guessed right and almost got her Paul out to it, but 1-1 Ogo with the finish. And I love that the leaders are the first ones taking it. This, the quick step up, opens her hips up at the last moment. Not enough time for Nielsen to read it, to get something on it. And just execute 1-1. So here comes Heslin. I wonder if Stephanie Golan will go all seniors here. Emily Heslin, the number six midfielder, plays that holding mid spot. Heslin, oh no! And she hit it too high over the crossbar and certainly disappointment for the senior from Woodbury. And she steps up and look at how long her approach is and she goes with the inside of her foot and lifts it. Usually with the inside of the foot, you get a little bit more accuracy. And that, she gets underneath it and it goes off the crossbar. And you get to see her fellow oh, teammate trying to calm her down in Bakken. All right, number Marissa 27, Shiva. Marissa Shiva. She scored the thrilling winner against Michigan in the first game of the Big Ten tournament. And she's a senior from Sellersville, PA, part of that Penn Fusion program. So now Nielsen going to try to deny Shiva. Shiva, and Shiva misses, and here we go. One good, one bad for both teams. 
And that's just too much time to think about it. You should already know where you're going before you go. She does that, but she takes a big deep breath. So many steps out wide. And this is all mental. There is no reason why anyone who plays soccer that can't do it. And trust me, I didn't take that many penalty kicks. I didn't want to. So this isn't me saying this is easy. I took one in my career at the international level. But this is such a mental mind game. You need those people that are rock solid to be able to convert it. Haley Hartkemeyer, look at that. One step in as Haley Hartkemeyer, a junior from Wisconsin. How about that? Didn't play at all. And that is a smile well deserved. And look how quick that is, right? She, the whistle blows and she quickly goes. There's not enough time to think about it. And she puts it away. Unbelievable moment for the junior. And here's Minnesota. At the moment, a 2-1 lead, but Penn State on the back half of these alternating penalty kicks through five rounds. Shea Moyer, sophomore, with the whistle. Deep breath, takes her time. Moyer, out, oh, she misses it. And Minnesota in good shape here, up 2-1 through three. And it just comes down to this moment. Doesn't matter how well you play and just totally gets on the inside of the ball. It's interesting. The players that have missed it have chosen the inside of their foot and gone with power and getting too much underneath it. That one just completely missing the net. Just bad foot placement. Stephanie Golan going deep to her bench. You can take any player you want that is eligible. They did not have to play in the game as we already saw a moment ago with Hartkemeyer coming on. And now it's gonna be Haley Menace, who also hasn't played, the junior from McLean, Virginia. Menace, oh, and it's off the crossbar. And she clangs it. And now Penn State can tie it right back up here with the fourth penalty kick. It's 2-1, Penn State still to go with their fourth. And the short kick up, and she's trying to chip the keeper, thinking the keeper's gonna go down. And just the too much Amazing. underneath it gets the crossbar. Number five, Maddie Nolf. All right, so Maddie Nolf will step forward for Penn State. Also a redshirt senior, a key part of that 2015 national championship team. Maddie Elliston Nolf to try to tie it through the first four PKs. Nolf. Extra second, extra breath, and then the hammer and through four, just like that. Each team have made two of their first four kicks. Just look at the excitement and the happiness knowing that she got her team back into it, 2-2. Not perfectly taken, but enough power to beat Nielsen, and Nielsen keeping her team's head up. This is all on the kickers. This has really very little to do with the goalkeepers. They just have to play big. So number four, Caitlin Haslip will take it and an easy done job. Three players off the bench for Stephanie Golan. This one a freshman. So clearly penalty kicks have been a key issue and Haslip. That's Emily Peterson, my bad, reverse there. Emily Peterson, the senior getting it done, of course. And the information reverse. Emily Peterson stepped right up and nailed it. And now you're going to have the other center back on the other side, Big Ten Defender of the Year, trying to keep her team in this. So Peterson makes it 3 2. Nielsen going to try to deny Rio. Rio! Oh, and Nielsen has guessed right every single time. But Rio slides it through and now will go to extra PKs. Tied three apiece going into after five rounds. Going into round number six. And Rio, nothing too Minnesota. deceptive there, but just hits it perfectly. You don't have to do too much. It's just a matter of picking your spot and just hitting it. A nice, solid touch to let it convert. And Nielsen, hand strength, not enough to push it away. TJ McKendrick. How about those quick penalty kicks for Stephanie Golan's team. Emily Peterson, number four, TJ McKendrick. And now Minnesota's put themselves in a spot again to win. And everyone has their own style, but I prefer the ones that go quickly because it doesn't allow any time for doubt to creep in your mind as a kicker. So 
Penn State pushing forward Penn here Penn now. State, Kim Dubs. Kim Dubs. Dubs over it. Nielsen ready. Dubs to extend the PKs with the shot. Oh, and Nielsen had guessed again. She's guessed right every single time, but just getting by her and more extra PKs. And that is the one Going to round number seven. that Nielsen could have saved. It's not well hit, number it's two. bouncing. McKinsey. And just because it's a little bit slower was the only way she could have gotten something onto it because it was accurately placed, just didn't have a ton of power. Kenzie Langdock. Dennis Reddy and Langdock. What a beautiful finish. And Minnesota again in position to win it if Nielsen can deny Penn State. And this is a great and take and PK. Three steps, boom, power, 19. pace, and just converts Ricky. it. Side netting. Dennis could have done nothing about that one. Frankie Tagliaferri, first team all Big Ten, sophomore against sophomore here. Nielsen ready, Tagliaferri to extend the game. And Nielsen has given Minnesota the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship and a spot in the NCAA Tournament. Coming into this conference play, Minnesota was on the wrong side of the bubble in order to control their destiny to be in the driver's seat. Their goal is to win this thing out so they could earn a spot in postseason play and extend their season, rewarding those seniors that have dedicated so much to the program. Penn State had their opportunities. They had the lion's share of possession. They created more dangerous chances, but they weren't able to execute. Took the Nittany Lions to penalty kicks, and Nielsen coming up big with the save. The senior class has been amazing, taking the stairs for Stephanie Golan and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Emily Peterson coming up big, Maddie Castro coming up big, and Nielsen with the save. The sophomore wanted to do it right for the seniors and this team that has been together, and they'll take home the title. Minnesota Golden Gophers, your 2018 Big Ten Tournament champions. Maddie Nielsen with the save. And the Golden Gophers have punched their ticket to the NCAAs, their second Big Ten championship in the last three years. Dr. Pepper tournament look, most important look is Minnesota is your champion. Congratulations to Stephanie Golan and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Our final score in PKs, Minnesota takes it. For Kate Markgraf, I'm Dean Linke. Field Hockey Championships coming up next on the Big Ten Network. The Gophers have won it here in Indy.